And a lot of the other bands that might have started off in the early 90s, the most important thing for them was to get a record deal. The most important thing for them was to be signed. The most important thing for you was to just get another gig, wasn't it? Yeah, we, we started at the very beginning uh, of our career. We sent out a couple of tapes. We made a tape. We sent it around. And nobody was interested. So then we, but then we had at the same time, we had this audience that was growing in the colleges. And there's this tapes were being sent before. Now it's all easy. Now you can just send it, send yeah. it across the internet, but uh, the web. But uh, but uh, there was sort of a buzz that grew, and then we'd send a tape off to to record companies or industry people, and we'd get nothing. So we just sort of gave up on them, and eventually mm. they came knocking when it looked like there was money to be made. But and a lot, foolishly, sure. Resigned. But a lot of tapes that were being sent around were tapes that were, let's face it, illegal, because an awful lot of people did the old Grateful Dead thing with you guys. Yeah. And you even had a section bit off that if you want to bootleg the gig, you go right ahead and bootleg it, and that really helped in terms of word of mouth. It still does, I think. Yeah, I'm just wondering. That's what I was going to ask. I mean, do you do you have a section section off? Well, they, they don't, it sort of takes too much time to have it. So it's easy to just bring your. We used to let people plug directly into the, to the. Uh, Soundboard, but that then it got to be kind of a spaghetti mess. I'd say it would with about a so thousand now people. they have to bring their own equipment. But we still, you still see twenty foot uh, towers of microphones and. But in one way, around. might that have been one of the reasons why you've had a bunch of live stuff out to let people say, look, if we like the live stuff, we do like people to spread it around. But hey, look, this is the way we like these gigs to sound too. Yeah, we like to put it out a better because it's definitely going to sound a little better if we if you spend a little time on it rather than just one microphone in the middle of a True. giant arena. So we can make it sound a little better. But uh, we appreciate the fact that people are, want to listen to our live shows, and uh, it really has been the the way that our music has has moved. Industry's biggest supporters of free music. You even let your fans uh, bring in equipment to record and trade songs online. I was just wondering, how do you feel about supporting something that so many uh, other musicians are against? Well, that's uh, that covers a lot of ground. So uh, there's a lot of different opinions I have. I think this certainly, uh, if uh, somebody makes something um, and they they want to be and it's their work and it's their livelihood, it's good that they be compensated for it. But the live recording thing, I think, uh, if people, I can't, I can't think of a reason unless you really, really suck live to not let people <laughs> record it because if they want it, they should be able to have it, right? Good questions, right, Dave? Yeah, thank you very much. Part of the legend about what's happened to your band, it is this notion that you went on the road. You started out at one club, in Charlottesville, and then another, and then a couple of neighboring clubs, mm -hmm. uh, and then somebody, I guess, in Richmond saw you, heard mm -hmm. you. Uh, and But it was the word of mouth thing. Yeah, and that in the end, because you did it that way, you are what you are. Yeah, I certainly, f I certainly f give credit to the, to, to my manager and to the way, to the people that listened to us early on. and and uh, spread the word with their tapes or whatever of shows. But see, that's interesting. The tapes, mm -hmm. Grateful Dead, people could record their concerts. Yeah, you, I sometimes think that's the, re that's, that's the comparison that, that's often made, is maybe uh, because of the tapes and because of that. But, uh, but you notice it because you go somewhere to perform, and all of a sudden, those kids in the audience are mouthing the words of the songs, and you're saying, how do they? How do you hell you know what I did? Yeah, songs. It was. It was that. That was a. I think it hit me the first time. We had no albums out. We had never put a CD out. I guess it was uh, uh, ninety four, maybe. Uh, no, I guess it was a little earlier, ninety three or ninety four. Um, I'm not good with time at this yeah, point, but. Uh, but we drove up to. What do you get? <laughs> the worst you'll get. <laughs> yeah. I should have. A, I should have some crib notes here. Uh, but we drove from Virginia. Uh, Past New York, which we played here, uh, up to a college in way up in Maine, and I can't even remember what the college was. It was a small college, and uh, and we played the show, and uh, all the kids were singing the words, and I, I think I even may have mentioned it to them. I'm wondering how. And they said tapes. And they, you know, so pretty much it was from tapes. They'd gone back home for the summer and then gotten tapes from their friends, and that's and how. And now it that out. you are signed with RCA. Mm -hmm. And now that you've had these extraordinary sales that I mentioned, you, you must know that some great performances that you remember when it was a very special night, there's somebody, not you, that has a copy 
of that night. Oh, sure, certainly. There's, there's, there's some that pop up <laughs> that I wish somebody did, that I wish nobody had copies of. Yeah, but others some... that you wish you could get your hands on. Oh yeah, and we, that's, I think it's one of the reasons that we now tape all our shows have been for a few years, really, because yeah. you know, just in, uh, in case there's, there's a magic moment. But there was a time when maybe we weren't, we couldn't afford the tapes, so, <laughs> so we're cutting corners.